Doug, when we look at the wide receivers that the Browns have drafted, this is like nightmares of draft mistakes past in some instances. Uh, we've got Greg Little in 2011, Vince Maley in 2015, Corey Coleman, a first rounder in 2016, Jordan Payton in 2016, and Antonio Callaway in 2018. That is not a list that is um, going to instill confidence that we have been able to identify which wide receivers can play in the NFL. But in the last 15 years, Coleman's the only guy they've taken in the first round, right? That's the only guy since Braylon Edwards that is really a whiff. Now, it is a whiff. It is hard to whiff as hard as the as the Browns whiffed on Corey Coleman. A lot of these other ones, right? I mean, there's some second-round guys. Little was a second-round guy. Brian Robisky a second round guy that didn't work out this other, you know, Antonio Callaway is a roll of the dice on a character concern in the fourth round. That didn't work. It is interesting. Like I'm okay with them not necessarily trying first rounders at receiver all the time, right? That, you know, they could have taken Michael Thomas instead of Corey Coleman in the second round. We all, you know, we, we all know that, that Corey Coleman again was a whiff, but it's not where they focused. And I will be curious. This was always a thing I was very big on when the Browns kept failing with their quarterbacks. They kept failing with quarterbacks in the 20s in the first round. They never took a guy early. So they failed with these receivers. But since Braylon Edwards, the only real shot they've taken is Corey Coleman. So I do think it's interesting what would lead them to take another shot and take another first rounder. And maybe one of the things that leads them there is they have a lot of other holes filled elsewhere. So maybe you could try another first round receiver, but you're right. It hasn't been good, but it also hasn't been like a ton of draft capital wasted on it. That's fair. And, and in fairness to the Browns, they did take Richard Higgins 2016 and, and Donovan Peoples Jones looked like a bargain um, a, a season ago. So in fairness, those two in, in mid to late rounds have been just fine. You know, Donovan Peoples-Jones, I think we can sometimes get too fired up about Donovan Peoples-Jones. I mean, he's, you know, he's going to be their fourth receiver this year. I don't know that he's a long-term answer, but it's a great sixth-round pick. Guy's a five-star recruit who should have been more productive in college than he was. So I like that pick for sure. And again, Higgins is in that class where Sashi Brown took, you know, whatever, four receivers in that group, but he's the, he's the one that worked out, right? But I, I do think you have to look at, like, the Jarvis Landry situation, that Jarvis was a guy – that was available to go get because he had been productive, but then, you know, you have to start paying a receiver and then you want to pay him that much that this also is a position where I don't know that it's a terrible idea to be like, well, let's let other teams take shots at the receiver. And then when they become free agents, we'll spend a little money here on guys that we know are productive. And in the meantime, we'll draft edge rushers and cornerbacks and offensive tackles with our, with our picks that matter the most. So I am very interested in them being on alert for the right receiver at 26 or maybe in the second round. But I also would say I, I think it might be decent draft strategy that they aren't one of these teams. They're not, you know, Matt Millen, who's throwing, throwing first round picks down the well, chasing receiver all the time.